Thanatos, whose name in Greek means death, is one of Greek mythology's most mysterious and obscure deities. Born of Nyx, the goddess of night, and Erebus, the god of darkness, Thanatos was always shrouded in mystery and fear. From birth, his destiny was tied to the inevitable task of carrying the souls of mortals to the afterlife. Often depicted as a somber-looking young man with black wings, Thanatos could move freely between the world of the living and the dead. His wings allowed him to move swiftly and stealthily, carrying with him an aura of silence and calm, heralding the coming of the end. Unlike other deities, he had no large temples or cults dedicated to his worship. His presence was feared and avoided, for he represented the inevitable end that all must face. Greek artists have long depicted his image in different ways. At first, Thanatos was seen as a dark, winged figure carrying an inverted torch, a symbol of the extinction of life. Over time, his representation changed, and he was shown with a black robe and a sickle, similar to the modern image of death. This transformation represented the evolution of human perception of death and the fear it aroused. Hypnos, the god of sleep and twin brother of Thanatos, shares a close relationship with him. They were often depicted together in mythology, as sleep and death were seen as similar states, both bringing a kind of peace. In many stories, Hypnos is said to accompany his brother on his travels, helping mortals to transition from life to eternal sleep more smoothly. This link highlights how the Greeks saw death not only as an end, but also as a kind of deep sleep. Although Thanatos did not star in great myths, his influence was present in many stories and legends. In Greek society, death was not seen simply as an end, but as a transition to another form of existence. This eternal cycle of life and death was deeply rooted in their culture and beliefs. Thanatos' life, though solitary, was full of purpose. His task, though dreaded, was essential to maintaining the balance of the cosmos. Whenever Thanatos arrived to take a soul, he performed his duty quietly and respectfully. There was no cruelty in his actions, only the serene acceptance of the inevitability of death. Despite not being the protagonist of great myths, his influence was undeniable. Sisyphus, known for his wit and cunning, was at the center of a myth where death itself was mocked. He was a king who had committed numerous crimes and deceptions, and for this, he was condemned to die. But Sisyphus was not one to accept his fate easily. When Thanatos arrived to take him to the underworld, the king came up with a bold plan. Sisyphus offered Thanatos a cup of wine, and as the god of death drank, the king took the opportunity to chain him up. Thus, Thanatos was trapped, unable to fulfill his duty. During his captivity, humans stopped dying, causing unprecedented chaos. The sick continued to suffer, and the elderly grew weaker, but death did not come to end their pain. Hades, the god of the underworld, soon noticed the disorder this caused. Without the souls arriving in his realm, the balance of the universe was broken. Furious, he turned to Zeus, who decided to intervene. Meanwhile, Ares, the god of war, was also outraged. With no death on the battlefield, his dominion was affected. Determined to restore order, Ares sought out and freed Thanatos. Upon his release, Thanatos resumed his work. The first soul to claim after his release was that of Sisyphus, who was taken to the underworld to face his eternal punishment. Zeus, in his wisdom, decided that Sisyphus's punishment would be a consequence of his cunning and arrogance. Thus, he was condemned to push a gigantic boulder up a mountain. Every time the rock was about to reach the top, it rolled down, and Sisyphus had to start all over again. Thanatos' destiny led him one day to the kingdom of Thessaly, home of Admeto, a king known for his hospitality and friendship with the gods. Admeto, 
despite his good fortune, was going through a bad time. His beloved wife, Alceste, was on the verge of death. Alceste's fidelity was such that she had accepted to die in her husband's place, thus fulfilling a condition imposed by the Moirai. Thanatos arrived at Alceste's bedside, ready to do his duty. Death is never easy, even for him, and every soul he took with him added weight to his existence. But Alceste was no mere mortal. Her sacrifice for love made her special. Yet Thanatos was to take her, and so he would. It was at this moment that Hercules, Greece's greatest hero and Admeto's close friend, intervened. Hercules, ever in search of justice and bravery, had promised to protect Alceste. Thanatos arrived silent as a shadow but met Hercules' fierce gaze. The hero, with clenched fists, planted himself in front of death. You will not take my friend's wife, Hercules shouted. The battle that followed was intense. Hercules, with his incomparable strength, pushed Thanatos back. Thanatos, accustomed to the inevitable acceptance of his presence, found himself challenged in a way he had not experienced before. Hercules, with one last effort, succeeded in driving Thanatos out. Death, though inevitable, was postponed thanks to the hero's intervention. Alceste recovered from the clutches of death and opened her eyes, finding her husband at her side, grateful and amazed by the miracle. Thanatos, though defeated on this occasion, bore no grudge. He withdrew in silence, leaving the mortals to celebrate his ephemeral triumph. Thanatos's presence went beyond simply being the end of earthly existence. Each time he arrived to guide a soul to the afterlife, it became a moment of transition and transformation. It was not only a closure, but also a passage to a new stage. The souls Thanatos encountered were diverse. Some, full of nobility and goodness, had led lives of virtue and respect. These souls, upon meeting him, felt a kind of peace. They had fulfilled their duties and were preparing to move on to a place of light and serenity. It was a journey to a brighter destiny, a reward for a life well lived. On the other hand, there were the souls who had given in to their darker desires, those who in life had sought to satisfy only their baser impulses. When Thanatos appeared before them, they felt the weight of their actions, their destiny was not one of light but of gloom, as a consequence of the choices they had made in life. In many cultures, death plays an essential role in the rituals of passage. The transition from youth to adulthood, for example, often involved a symbolic death of the young, marking the end of one stage and the beginning of another. These rites showed how death could be seen not just as an ending, but as a vital part of the cycle of growth and renewal. Although most people feared the encounter with Thanatos, some saw it as a form of liberation. For those who suffered, his arrival meant the end of pain and the beginning of a new phase for the spirit. It was the passage to an existence without earthly concerns, an opportunity for the soul to find a new purpose. Although feared, Thanatos was also seen as a figure of liberation. For those who suffered, the arrival of Thanatos meant the end of pain and the beginning of a new stage for the spirit. In this sense, death was seen not only as an end, but as a transition to something beyond mortal comprehension. In Greek culture, although they sought to avoid an encounter with Thanatos as long as possible, his presence was inevitable and part of the natural cycle of life. Thanatos, with his dark and silent figure, brought with him calm, and many found a strange peace in his arrival. For some, Thanatos' arrival represented a secret hope. The elderly, weary of their pains and the slow loss of their faculties, often looked into the night with a mixture of resignation and longing. At such times, Thanatos was not a shadowy figure, but a promise of rest and peace. In hospitals and on battlefields, his shadow was both feared and longed for, relief from endless suffering. Death, in Greek mythology, was not always something dark and terrible. 
It could also be a return to the arms of the ancestors, a reunion with those who had gone before. This more humane and comforting view of Thanatos offered solace in times of greatest pain and despair. Tales and songs spoke of his touch as a final caress, a gentle and compassionate farewell. Thanatos was present in the last moments of every mortal, though invisible to human eyes. His touch was gentle, almost imperceptible, carrying souls with him to a place of rest. The poets described him as a gentle shadow gliding among the stars, guiding weary souls to a more serene destiny. In every home, in every corner of the world, Thanatos played his role with a serenity that inspired both fear and respect. Knowing that their encounter with him was inevitable, mortals sought to live in such a way that their final journey would be dignified. Life, then, became a preparation for that last step, an attempt to find meaning and purpose before crossing the threshold. And so, Thanatos, the silent guardian of the underworld, continued his work, guiding souls to their final destination. This video was created for the Myth Comics channel. See you in the next mythological adventure.